hi and welcome back so in the previous video we uh, looked at the concept of uh, shares and how share prices are determined so in this video we look at the uh, share market and the economic activity but before we do so let's revisit uh, figure 15.6 which we used to begin our argument or our conversation on uh, share, the share market prices so figure 15.6 showed us the large movement in uh, share prices over uh, a two a decade period however it is not uh, usual for index to go up or down by 50 15 percent within a year however as you can see and as we already explained earlier um in from march 2012 to march 2013 the share market went up by 26 percent in real terms while in 2008 it went down by 40 percent so daily movements of two percent or more are honestly not too usual in most cases so what we're trying to establish now is what causes these movements so the first point to be made is that these movements should be and they are for the most part unpredictable the reason why is best understood by thinking in terms of the choice people have between shares and, and bonds so if it is it is widely believed that a, a year from now the price of a share is going to be 20 percent higher than today's price holding the share for a year would usually um would usually be attractive much more attractive than holding a short-term bond so there will be a very large uh, demand for shares in that regard so its price would increase today to the point where the expected return from holding the share was back in line with the expected return on other assets this means that in other words that the expectation of a high share price next year would lead to a higher share price today so while at uh, any moment a few financial investors might have a better information or simply better at reading uh, be better at reading the future however in actual practice major movements in share prices cannot be predicted so even in the absence of uh, future predictions there are other ways that we can uh, explore to sort of uh, predict the the expectation of our share market in the future so two ways are one we can use the benefit of a uh, high of hindsight to look back and identify the news to which the market reacted and therefore we can expect it to react according to to the same uh, pattern alternatively we can ask what if questions for example what would happen to the share market if the south african reserve bank were to embark on a more expansionary policy or if consumers were to become more optimistic and increase spending so uh, in this section we're going to look at the two what if questions using the is and the lm model so for simplicity we'll assume that uh, the expected inflation equals to zero so that the real interest rate and the nominal interest rate are, are equal so firstly suppose that the economy is in a recession and the central bank which is the so the south african reserve bank in our case decides to adapt to adopt a more expansionary monetary policy so the increase in money shifts the lm curve down from this lm to to a lower uh, uh, lm curve in this field and equilibrium output moves also from from a to a so this is something that we've already covered before in this uh in this uh, module as well as in in uh, economics in macroeconomics too but now how will the share market react to to such an expressionary monetary policy 
So the answer depends on what participants in the share market expected monetary policy to be before the South African Reserve Bank uh, made its move. So if they fully, um, if they fully anticipated the expressionary uh, policy, then the share market will not uh, react. So neither its expectation of future dividend nor its expectation of the future interest rate are affected by a move it had already anticipated. So from equation uh, 15.11, nothing will change and uh, the share price will remain um, unchanged, will remain the same. So suppose instead the South African Reserve Bank's move is at least partly unexpected. So in this case, the share price will increase. They increase for two reasons. So one, more expressionary monetary policy implies lower interest rate for, for some time. And secondly, it also implies higher output for, for some time. So that's until the economy returns to a natural level. And therefore, higher dividends will be, will be seen. So as equation 15.11 depict, both lower interest rate and higher dividend uh, current and expected will lead to an increase in the, share, in the share prices. The second what if is that of an increase in consumer spending. So consider an expected uh, shift in the IS uh, curve to the right, shown by this shift resulting for example from as from stronger than expected consumer spending so as a result of the shift output uh, will increase from uh from a to a there. so there'll be a shift in the in the in, in a in the equilibrium in our in our figure figure a so seeing this increase in output will tempt us to believe that the share price will go up. This is because a stronger economy means higher profit and a higher and therefore higher dividends for, for some time. However, the answer is incomplete for at least two reasons. The first reason is that the answer ignores the, the effect of higher activity on interest rate. So if you remember very well, the movement along the LM curve implies an increase in both output and the interest rate. So while higher output leads to higher profit and so higher share prices, higher interest rate on the other side leads to lower share prices. So the question to ask is which of the two effects, the higher profit or the higher interest rate dominate? So the answer depends on the slope of the LM curve. This is shown by panel uh, B here. So a very flat LM curve leads to a, a, mo a movement from this A to that A with small increase in interest rate, large increase in output and therefore an increase in share price. So a very steep LM curve such as this one leads to a movement from a to this A here, with large increase in interest rate, small increase in output, and therefore a decrease in, uh, in share prices. The second reason is that the answer ignores the effect of the shift in the IS curve on the behavior of the, the Reserve Bank. In practice, it is the effect that financial investors often care about the most. So after receiving the news of unexpected strong economic activity, the main question that participants of the Joint Spec Stock Exchange will ask is, how will the South African Reserve Bank react? So one, will the South African Reserve Bank accommodate the shift in the IS curve? That is, decrease interest rates to allow the increase in, in the money supply in line with money demand, so as to avoid the increase in, in, the, in the interest rate. So the South African Reserve Bank accommodation corresponds to the downward shift of the LM curve from, from uh, LM here to this LM in our panel C. So this is panel C. So in this, in this case, the economy will go from point A to this point A there. Share and share prices will increase and output is expected to be higher and interest rates are not expected to increase.
However, in a case where the South African, South African Reserve Bank instead keep the same monetary policy, leaving the LMK unchanged, the economy will move uh, along the, the LMK. As, as we saw earlier, what happens to the share prices is uh, it's, uh, ambiguous. Profits will be higher, but so will, and will interest rate. Or the lastly, if the Reserve Bank um, worried that the increase in output above uh, above YA may lead to an increase in inflation. So this will be the case if the economy is already close to the natural level of output. So if YA here is close to the natural level of output, the further increase in output would lead to an increase in inflation something that the south african reserve bank wants to avoid so a decision by the south african reserve bank to counteract the uh, the right uh, right right shift of the iscf by increasing interest rate leading to a monetary contraction causes the lm curve to shift from uh, this lm to a higher lm curve so the economy goes from a here to a there and output does not change so in this case the share price will surely go down suggesting that there is no change in expected profits but the interest rate is now likely to be higher higher for some time okay so let's conclude on this or rather summarize on what we just covered so the share price depends very much on the current and future movements in activity but it does not imply anything, uh, any, any simple relation between share prices and output. So how share prices respond to the change in output depends on three factors. That is one, it depends on what the market expected in the first place. And second, is it uh, depends on the source of the shocks behind the change in output. And also on how the market expects the central bank to react to the uh, output change. So the next thing is to look at share prices and risk. So one thing that we haven't outlined is that not all movements in share in, in share and other asset prices come from the news about future dividends or interest rate. In some cases, these uh, prices can vary because of uh, of of time in perception of risk, and also because of the deviation of price from the fundamental value, namely the bundle and. Uh, and fate. So let's look at this aspect. So starting with the share price and risk. As we've seen, we've assumed so far that people cared only about expected returns uh, and did not care about, about risk. However, in reality, people are not risk neutral and they care about risk. So, so if investors perceive shares to be more risky than bonds, and uh, since people dislike uh, risk, they are more likely to to require a risk premium to hold shares rather than bonds. And we call that uh, a risk premium uh, theta or we denote it by this theta. So for example, if uh, the risk premium is 5%, people will only hold shares if the expected rate of return on shares exceeds the expected rate of, of return on short-term bonds by that risk uh, premium. So in that case, the arbitrage equation uh, between the shares and bonds will be such that on the bonds the risk premium must be also included to to balance the two so this simply is simply to add, add the risk premium on the on the bond price so going through the same steps as for equation 15.9 and replacing the expected price uh, or future price by its expression of of time t plus one and so on the share price will uh, be equal to a factor that now includes on its discount factor the interest rate and also the risk premium. And lastly, economists believe that share prices doesn't always correspond with their uh, present discounted value, which is also called the fundamental value. So they believe that at times people might be willing to pay more than the fundamental value of a, of a share if they expect the price to further increase in the future. All right. So we've come to an end of our chapter 15 and we'll start our chapter 18 in the in the next video. Thank you.